Oh, what? We're in here. Hey. Fucking lovely day outside. Am I right? And we're in the fucking basement. Dark basement. Yeah. We performed the ICR here last week. On this stuff. Blech. Yeah, it's not the neatest of things, is it? So, I like uh, the way it comes out. Yeah. <laughs> into the room. It's, there must be a joist there. Or yeah, yeah, that's a point. It's all a bit of nonsense, really, isn't it? The last DICR, September 2005. They've got five years on it. No one's been back since, it seems, until we appeared 15 years later, 17 years later. I keep mm. thinking it's 2020. It's not. It's 2022. How did that days of 2020. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quite so, quite so. We're going to change this lot out today, but we've got fault to find as well. Um, there are a few things that obviously made the report. I mean, it's not necessarily dreadful, but the workmanship's not great. Non-type tested C40 sitting in there. This board is oversubscribed to the amount of circuits it's carrying. You've got this subboard here where someone's put an RCD to serve the one socket circuit there's actually a ir fault on a socket circuit which my esteemed colleague here is going to try and track down while i do the clever stuff in here so we're going to pull this out put in a sbs board beautiful beautiful indeed yes mm. indeed indeed yes. rcbo's double pole isolation on everything including breakers no neutral fly leads the boards can pre-assembled i ordered it what day is it today friday how did it? Wednesday, wasn't it? Was it Wednesday? I think it was Wednesday night for delivery. Oh, no, no, it must have been Tuesday night right. at about half eleven or something. It came Thursday because it's next working day from when it's processed. Yes, comes comes all configured. So all we got to do is get this lot off the wall, get new circuits into it. You've seen a million board change videos. I'm not even sure why we're filming this. Really, this we might even make a video of this. This may go nowhere. It may go nowhere. No. Okay. So uh, yeah, in, in which case. Uh, you're not seeing us here? No. Nope. Fuckers. But uh, we thought we'd get the camera out. You never know. There might be something of interest. This fault that we've got to find may be of interest. We weren't able to find it during our ERCR when we were pulling off a load of accessories. Yeah, there's a lot of crap left from the guy who's moving out. And uh, there was an entire half of a room unavailable to us. Well, I've dragged all that away this morning so I can access that. Yes, yeah, so we've got so, access now to things we didn't have access to last week. Yes. And we're hoping... As with any IR fault, because you know what they're like for pain in the ass to track down, that we're going to push, pull a socket off and it'll be a case it'll of this Here's Johnny. We didn't know access to. It. Yeah. That's yeah. what it would be. Let's hope so. Let's hope so. So I've got Easy Cert all listed out here. I'm going to go, this is our report from last week. I'm going to set this to save as domestic electrical installation certificate. That's, that's one of the reasons why I like software for your reporting as opposed to something like Excel spreadsheets. So I used to do all this in Excel. But you're always cussing it. Always oh, yeah. Easy it pisses me the fuck off. Here's, here's a thing with Easy to, which I thought was rather sneaky and haven't said before on camera. Uh, I pay annually. Yes. Anally for easy cert. Yeah. It's not that bad actually, it's about like 60 odd quid or yeah, something. Yeah, it's the first payment. That's first payment's easy. expensive because they've got to cover their technical support for getting you set up and running, but after that, subsequent year on year, it's only yeah. like 60 quid or something, which works out cheaper for me than a pay per cert model. Yeah. Um, uh, 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 yeah. Last December, I had a technical problem. I had a problem with my easy cert software and I logged a technical support query and they're normally quite quick, aren't they? Oh, Brian, there, yeah. Waited three weeks for me to renew, before, and as soon as I renewed, they answered the query. Oh, that's that's poor. That's a cunt's that's trick. Poor, if yeah. I'm paying for 52 weeks of support, I expect 52 weeks of fucking support. And if I log my fucking fault with the software, the day before it's yeah, due, on the yeah. last day, yeah. I want a fucking response. Yeah. Not a, well, this guy's renewing in three weeks, let's see if he renews or not before we start answering yeah. his queries. Yeah, that's, that's, that's wrong. Yeah, yeah, so, you Come know. Come on, easy to... Yeah, not happy with that. Uh, pull your fucking socks up, otherwise you lose me as a customer. So, but one thing I like about using software is that I can take my report from last week and I can just convert it into a certificate, and I don't have to go refilling out a load of details. What's the date today? Is it the twenty? I should know because it's uh, yeah, twenty ninth. Twenty ninth. Yeah. So I'm going to change that certificate number to twenty ninth oh seven two two oh one because it's the first certificate we're doing today, and probably the only one. And obviously there are a few blanks to fill out. 
but the current circuit layout is there. And what I'll do when I come along and replace the board is I'll just shuffle these circuits around and change whatever numbers need changing. So the 60898s will change the 61009s, the RCD types will go in there. Uh, hopefully, Nigel will find this IR fault and the, the number that's in there at the moment, which is uh, 0. No, sorry, what is it? What are we looking at? Is this yeah. one here? Uh, no, it's not. Where is it? Is, okay, now it's gone. is it not in the one in the red? Oh, it's, 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 no, it's, I'll tell you what, it's on DB2. Ah, it's <laughs> under the board. Because I've got two dBs listed here. Is it the little got two DB dBs up there? there? Is it the little? It one is the little one. Yeah, 0.59. Okay. Between six. live conductors and earth. Hopefully, Nigel will find that while I piss around in here. And bingo bongo! It's Friday. We can go off and call it a day early. Lovely. Let's talk less about this shit and get the fuck on with Let's it. Get on with it. If you do, you want to test that before I start? Yes, yes. The first thing we're going to do, always best to do this when you've got a fault. We obviously we've seen the fault last week. What we're going to do is going to get the tester on there again today, verify the fault is still present, is still reading what we got last week, because then we know for sure whether we found the issue or not. As Nigel goes about doing whatever he does, what do you do? I'll just go and sit in a room upstairs and bang around. Sit around vaping. Yeah, I'll go and vape and. Look at my phone and make the occasional shuffling and banging noises. Vape wanker. <laughs> I'm going to connect line neutral and we're getting this IR fault with respect to earth. Respect. You know, I'm going to use the hikey cokey for this, Nigel. Oh, hikey <clears throat> cokey. We like this, don't we, Nigel? We do, we do. A bit of analog action. Oh, eh? uh, right, 250 volts backlight on. Oh, when I run a test, that's obviously needle no deflection means that uh, we are high on our IR. Mm. And if I were to short the probes, needle full scale deflection means we are shorted on our IR. So we are expecting, if this fault is still present that we saw last week, if I put my clip on here. Oops, oh, I'm sorry, sorry about mate. my camera I'm operator. I put my clip on here and on the earth conductors here. Are. Then I'm expecting to see the needle deflect toward the left. And sure enough, it does. What are we actually reading there? So this is the top scale and we are reading what we had last week it's 0.5 climbing up to one it's actually climbing look at that there's there's movement there we're below one mega ohm which is obviously the minimum cutoff according if, to if we sit here and watch that and it goes above one mega ohm <laughs> is that it fixed? well <laughs> we, yeah yeah that's it no we still have to investigate either but the good news is and it is good news the fault is still present. I hate it when fault clear up of their own accord, yeah. which is very rare. But, you know, if, if it's water getting to where it shouldn't be and it's dried out or whatever, then that can be a bit of a pain because, for all you know, the fault's going to manifest again when it next rains. Yeah. But the Hayoki Koki has confirmed that our fault is still present, which means, Nigel, you, you dumb sucker, off. yeah, you're off to try and find out what the fuck is going on. Come on. Come on. You're off to find out what's going on. Yeah, I'll leave you. I'll start it is you're gonna taking this all apart. Disassembly is underway. Not much left in there. Let's go and see what old bitch tits is doing. I can hear them moaning in here somewhere. Where are you? Where are you? Oh, yes. You say, Christ, look at that. This is just. It's fucking screwed. Well, I mean, this has got to be something of a smoking gun, hasn't it? If we've got rust, damp walls down here. I don't think it's that one, but, you know. Yeah, well, that might be indicative of yeah, further problems there. with damp. I'll just keep going. You always do, Mr. M. I do. Like just keep going. Energize the bunny. Right, so what's happened, Nigel? All sockets are off, are they, on this? Yeah, all sockets and FCUs on that circuit have been pulled off. Okay, oh. Uh -huh. uh, okay, so let's see what the Hayoki Koki makes of that. Oh, 
more in the sort of 40 mega ohm range. That's jumped right up, which is good news. Although you haven't actually found a reason. Let's go and have a look. I found a few squashed cores, but nothing. The fold was still present, wasn't it, before you pulled all these other ones off in the pulled kitchen? These ones off, yeah. So what are we thinking? We're thinking that something's just been caught on a. Yeah, the majority is one not okay. Earth bar or something. You know, not really. So with this sort of fault, sometimes all it is is just a fucking nick in the cable, yeah. and the cable is crushed against the metal back box or something like that. But uh, there was squashing on the this one, but it was just the neutral squashing against the plastic, so I wouldn't expect to see an error from that. No, look at this one down here. Let's see how you got across yeah. there between. Yeah. This is Imagine that's not to earth, is it? No, but I've got to look closer at these things. Yeah, so the fact that the fault seems to have cleared with all the face plates off suggests it's perhaps a crushing fault. See, we got a crush there. You see in the slight nick. Oh, yeah, it's been dinked yeah. there, isn't it? But it's not like it's against the metal bat box, but if it's close enough to a CPC mm. core. Same here on the line, but it's not much. If you redress those, yeah, just so that they're neat and because there's too much meat in there isn't there? there's too yeah there's a lot of like okay, cable in there i'll trim it back and yeah give it all a good tidy up yeah uh, and back on maybe do them yeah back on sort of one or two at a time and we'll retest with each one and yeah. see well i'll get these fcu sorted first because no one likes fcu pain in the ass uh oh, oh i've got four stop <laughs> Stop! What are you doing? Sorry, mate. It's this new camera. I thought I'd see what happened if we turned it upside down. It's, it's a bit dangerous, isn't it? It is you a bit dangerous. Wouldn't have got that it's with the old camcorder. Bash me head with that. <laughs> right. Uh, so yeah, I'll go around. Those don't look too bad. I'll check them out, put them back on. I remember that socket was reading high from the front anyway. That particular one in the cupboard. So I'll change that. Do you think it's worth for us renewing all the face plates? Mind you, but it's, it's all square edge, isn't it? It is. That one needs changing, I know for sure. Um, there was another one, but that was upstairs, which I did change last time we were here. That was top floor. What a fucking bore. SBS board going in. I use the board builder at sbstradesales.co.uk to put this together. And uh, no, this isn't a sponsored video. I, I paid for this. <laughs> so uh, let's not uh, assume that I'm sucking someone off by blowing its trumpet. Surge protection, surge protection over current protective device. One, two, three, four, five, six RCBOs. This protective device is an MCB. Yes, it does have a blue button just like the RCBOs, but it's not actually a button. It's just a, um, a bit of plastic just for aesthetic it actually says mcb in raised type uh, the legend on there as opposed to the t for test button so it's true double pole as an mcb dual buzz bar we've shown these off before i'm actually going to this comes pre-configured so i did the board builder thing i said i want a 14 way board 12 spare ways these are this is the rcbo layer i want and i want four blanks i am going to change the configuration a little bit so i want to use a couple of my SPS spares, not all of these. These are just the ones I've just got out of, out of my uh, off the van. But uh, I've got a couple of them sitting around as spares. I thought, well, let's let's use them instead of them sitting around doing nothing. So I should be configuring this board and getting it uh, into that horrible mess very shortly. <sighs> Have I mentioned that I'm doing board changes? Have I mentioned before, Nigel, that I'm doing board changes? Ugh, worst part of getting the board on is fighting to get the uh, mechanics of the thing in place when you're battling with cables hanging out of it and you're trying to get it level and you're trying to get it screwed up and that sort of stuff. I was going to put some trunking in and bring the cables through into the trunking, but uh, because of this cut out in the plaster here, it kind of lends itself to being backfed. I could have bought this SPS board with this cut out, but because I wasn't quite sure exactly how I was going to do it, then I'm about to manually knock it out and line it myself. But uh, you can, using their board builder, uh, ask them to do that for you. So it turns up to site with all the holes pre-fitted. I think I'll probably fit new flexi tails there somewhere. I've lost them. They're over there. Nigel thinks he's found the folks, more excitingly. Uh, now we know that's 
currently with him, he's got a lot of accessories pulled off and we're quite high on the IR, sort of hitting the 30 to 40 mega ohm range. Let's go see what he's found. It's fucking hot in there. You've got it easy out here as always. What have you found, Nigel? If you'd like to come in my car. Oh, <laughs> it's the best offer I'm getting this Friday. You can see here what looks like a crush, yeah? Yeah, that looks like a crushed core. Cool. Right. I'm going to get further in a minute, but this was getting trapped there with the screw, and obviously this. And the screws are earth by the. Uh, yeah. But if we look closer, you can see. Oh, and there you go. I bet that's it. I bet that's it. That was squashed in there like so. now last week when we performed the icr we went looking for this fault but it goes to show how tricky it can be i think there was a unit in here wasn't there and we yeah. we didn't extract it because the guy's moving out whatever was in there is gone and given us access so, to that socket but this is the kind of thing we're looking for we're looking for just a little bit of nicked insulation that's getting a bit close to you earth can't parts. see it unless you get hands on and yeah pull it to one side good find so, and there's enough meat on them for me to just trim back. Yes. So if you put all that back together, have you still got any sockets off upstairs? All the sockets are off upstairs, but the fault was still there when... Yes, the fault was we still retested. present. So, so the f there isn't a fault upstairs, it is on this. So if you put that back together it. and uh, dress it properly, yes. we ought to find our uh, reading. It's still not perfect, it's still not off-scale high, but... Well, I mean, look at it. This is a builder's breakfast. Would you take... 30 to 40 mega ohms at the arse. I would. Depends who was offering. <laughs> <laughs> if you want them to pass the certificate paperwork, you're going to have to. I mean, with older wiring, it's often the case that you're not going to get those perfect IR readings, which is why we say we're so sniffy about seeing EICRs where they've always got greater than 999 for everything on yeah. like 40, 50 year old wiring. Does it happen? And it's just like, really? Really? I mean, it can happen, can happen, but more often than not, there's going to be at least something around the place that's giving you just something that's not quite right. And especially when it's between line and neutral, because on an EICR, unless you know for damn sure everything's isolated, you just don't test IR between line and neutral. So, yes, I'm confident that Nigel has found our smoking gun there. And uh, once he's got it back together, We'll get the Hayoki to confirm that. In the meanwhile, I'm going to get back on. We're sorting out all this vacuum mess. It is high up on the wall. Ideally, of course, it'd be much lower, but I don't want to get into extending all these circuits. And it's uh, not too far removed from where the original CU position was. That's just how they built them. Until quite recently, where they figured out people had wheelchairs and stuff. But fucking hell, we're in a basement here. It's not like some can get down here in a frigging wheelchair. So, you know, you've got to have a certain amount of mobility to be down here in the first place to do anything with the board. These days, you would put this somewhere more accessible, like in the hallway or somewhere where anybody can get to it to in order to fiddle with it, to push the buttons on it. But that's just not the design of the place. And I'm not proposing we move the board or get into anything too heavy with it. Uh, we're just here to change it today. So let's get on with that. I don't just hate videos where people do a CU change and then they just cut from like the start to the end. Well, <laughs> with hardly anything in between. Is that something we're going to do? Well, uh, yes, because we haven't filmed much of this. We're too busy working. What time is it now? Two o'clock. It is. Uh, we're all done and on and stuff apart from the labelling, really. As usual, not the neatest of jobs, but for fuck's sake, it's Friday. <laughs> I never was able to um, do them Looks as... all right to me. Yeah, it's just fine. It's, it's serviceable. That's all you want, isn't it? Isn't it, lad? So we've got three spare ways. Uh, as it turns out. Charming. Yeah. One is charmed. So... Our IR fault got fixed by Nigel, and who knew he would be useful today? Good find, Nigel. Good find. But otherwise, aside from a couple of last 
tests for this the purpose of this certificate we are done and the world is a slightly safer place once more because we now have a full RCBO board instead of something that only had RC protection on a couple of iffy on one iffy circuit wasn't it mm. before swish I mean, you know, with all these retrofit things, it's always as only as good as the as what you're presented with, isn't it? The space you're in and the wall oh, yeah, you got yeah. to work with and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Board labeled. Yeah. Yeah. Got my super new T and I label on there. Good piss. Piss. I find a little bit, little bit moist still. Find the piss most satisfying these days in my old age. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. When when it works properly, mm. my prostate moans sometimes. Oh, well, mine's mine's very good. I've got uh, good penis muscle control. Good for you. My penis muscle is fine. It's my prostate. <laughs> I'm not sure. If, do you know where your prostate is? Well, I, I've got nothing dribbling out the end, so you know whatever whatever it is, whatever it is. It's all under control at this end. And like Nigel, who You'll catch up. dribbles all over the seat of the van, <laughs> leaves a crusty yellow wet stain. <laughs> yeah, it's not good. It's not good. OK, well, uh, I think our work here is done and we should fuck off. Fuck, ski off, ski Friday. Off. And it's sunny out. Well, let's go. And now on DSES.TV, four minutes of Nigel on the van talking about how numbers can have a decimal point after them. I watched a thing the other day. No, no one's going to be interested. Uh, about maths and the massive holes in maths. And holes in maths? Yes. Maths cannot be consistent or precise. No, we're not talking your basics, two plus two. Yeah. When it comes to arithmetic, you can stick it up your maths hole. As far as I'm but, concerned. Uh, there were some very interesting experiments done where numbers were replaced with pseudonyms, like one greater than each. Each number was replaced with a letter, and they were labelled one greater than a, one greater than b, and so on. It's, it's very difficult for me to explain because I'm no maths student. I can never get the hang of fucking out. But the fucking way you're beaming around. Really what it master. came down to me in my head. Look at this cunt. I know. Dickhead. Where it came down. Oh, and, and another one behind it. Fuck me. Two in a row. I never could get my head around calculus, all these real and imaginary numbers. Well, this is what they were saying. They were saying calculus, there is no, there's supposed to be a limit in calculus, uh, an imaginary limit, and that doesn't truly exist, uh, he was saying. But what it comes down to is we count in numbers, which is a form of digital counting, one, two, then between you and you've got 1.1, 1 .1, so on, so on. So on. Fucking hell, Martian, is this going somewhere? <laughs> but they were saying... There better be a fucking maths, punch to this. No, there's no point. Maths Shit. is more like analogue. It's infinite in between the numbers. Uh, more than digital. Because there's massive holes in maths. No, not in the maths that I would do, or an accountant would do. Or just massive holes in it. I, I, would like, uh, I ain't smart enough to fucking, in maths at least. I would like to give a shout out to my old maths teacher at college 30 years ago, Mr. Allen. What, because he taught you nothing? Because he was fucking useless. <laughs> and uh, he had this really nasal voice, he used to stand in the front going, X, Y, and a half. And uh, no one knew what the fuck he was talking about. And uh, he used to chide us for it. Why are none of you understanding this? Maybe it's because you're a shit maths teacher. <laughs> yeah, never fucking knobhead. Does that not ever fucking occur to you that maybe it's your teaching that's shit and that's why the class isn't getting it? I've gone the wrong way. I should have turned left up there. I was just saying that I found this oh. particularly interesting. Can't you go down to I, the I, island? I can now. turn left here, but I can't. There's no right turn. Of I'll have to, so I, I've got it up. But no, I, the Commonwealth Games traffic's all fucked up. Oh. Right now. Um, yeah, so Mr. Allen, fuck you. And just to say as well, I went on the subject of maths teachers a few years later, 
this was back because I was in college 92, 93 with this asshole. Went back to college in 97 to start HNC or HND, I can't remember what it even was now. And uh, same college, and we had another teacher, Helen Hubbard, who was excellent. She I don't know taught what, you your phenomenal maths I don't, I, well, I don't know what she's doing today, but I got through HNC or HND maths, whatever it was, thanks to her. And it's great to pass because I'm still shit at it. But she made a shitload more sense than that fucking asshole Mr. Allen could ever have done. Next one, I done like half. <laughs> well, I mean, I didn't have a point. I just, I watched something very complex and very interesting. Don't do it, oh, for the love of and God. And I could follow what he was saying while he was saying it and demonstrating. But I'd be fucked if I could follow it afterwards. So I could, you know, it was very interesting. Just something you watch on YouTube. Don't watch stuff on YouTube. The fuck's up, it's full of shit. Jesus wept. That just kept going, didn't it? Imagine being on a long journey with the fucker. Speaking of tedium, here come the shout outs. I love it when a plan comes together. <laughs> Nigel, I'll lick your ice cream and you can lick my lollipop. I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> the best offer you're getting on a hot day, mate, so don't turn it down. Right. First thing to say about this video is. I don't know what's going on in the thumbnail either. Basically, uh, it's a video about a board change and I didn't know what the hell to put in the thumbnail. So I gave the thumbnail artist artistic license to do something yes. with it. And for some reason, it's a picture of us running from a burning building, me carrying a box of kittens and Nigel carrying a dog over his head while dressed in suits. <laughs> I haven't seen it yet. I can't wait. All right. Good job. Interesting because... <laughs> We mentioned about it being a board change video and we didn't know what to do with the thumbnail. Neil Bridgman's on Twitter this past week. Sorry, the sun, sun's right in Nigel's eye there. It is. You want to wear a, a baseball cap like me, mate? Keep, no, keep I don't. Out I don't, keep don't. Out. No, no. Neil Bridgman was saying on Twitter that uh, he predicted yeah. the end of YouTube Sparkies a year ago because, well, there's not enough content really. There's not, and it's not a varied enough industry to keep coming out with things that are interesting and different. And perhaps he's right. Perhaps, perhaps. So this has been another CU change video. And there's only so many CU change videos, electric vehicle videos you can do. Maybe we should go back to videos of me kicking you in the balls and shitting in your toolbox and that stuff. Like, you know, we can do that sort of thing. But uh, I mean, this uh, there wasn't really a point to this. We just uh, we had the camera with us. It's a vlog. Yeah. So we do it. Okay. Maybe we won't do too many more of that sort of subject, but. It's, I mean, well, we were never sponsored or anything anyway, so if we've got something to say, we'll say it, and maybe it'll be good, maybe it'll be a load of shit. Yeah. It's worth it for the thumbnail alone. And there you go, you see, you've got a quality thumbnail. A quality out thumbnail from a quality artist. But, yes, I think Neil's right to a certain extent. It's, yes. Uh, it is something that's uh, getting increasingly hard to find original content for. And, as we said in this, SBS don't pay us. We had to buy that board. Yep. We didn't even ask them to send one free, but uh, it's we just like it, don't we? And we, we had a, a fault to find. Nigel found the fault. So, you know, all worked out, all worked out. Uh, right, what else have we got? That's new. I have divorced myself from alcohol. I'm clean. Yes, you're clean. clean. You are clean, I can attest to that so far. It's been, been nearly a fortnight since, since my last... Boozy session. Well done, mate. Well and done. No plan to go. The thing is, see, I'm, I was never an alcoholic. I was a drunkard. <laughs> an alcoholic feels they must have a drink, can't resist the drink. I, I, I just like having a drink and yes, yes. Uh, falling over at, at the end of having you too did, many drinks. You did particularly enjoy that. Yeah. yeah, I could always take it or leave it, and for now, well, I've left it. Good. good, and, good. Uh, but you've got a man's got to have a vice. Absolutely. A man's got to have a vice. Hence, cigar smoking. Yes. Uh, see. I used to be a smoker, Dave, never moaned. It, I even took little breaks every hour or something, never had a moan about it. But and I never, ever thought I would see Dave smoking. Never, never in my life. Don't do what we do, kids. It's not big, hard or clever, although cigars are kind of cool. They are, they suit. You look like Clit, Clit Westwood. And... Uh, 
I'm thinking more Hannibal A team. Come on. Hannibal A team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could see that. Yeah. So uh, yes, so it was either a choice of cigars or womanising, and uh, the wife. Well, the wife was up for womanising well. because it would save her having to drain my balls every third Sunday <laughs> of the month. <laughs> so, yeah. so I just felt cigars were probably going to be cheaper in the long run and perhaps less hassle. So uh, yes. here we are. And guys like us, we're not made to live forever. We're not meant to live forever, are we? We're not made no, to retire no, no. or to oh. be in our 80s sitting around moaning about our arthritis or whatever. We're made no. not to get old. We're made to keel over on a job one day. I don't know, no retirement for us or anything like that. Uh, what have we got here? <laughs> so yes, buy me a coffee. Is now buy me a stogie. All oh, right. Get that new logo up in the corner there. What do I get? Well, I'm afraid you get nothing, mate. Because unless you take, start taking up smoking again. <laughs> anyway, any recommendations? Do let me know. I'll be interested to hear. Obviously, not something that's a bit. Uh, well, you've got to go to this shop in some corner shop in London that's a specialist tobacconist and pay 500 quid for this Cuban. Take a flight to Cuba. Yeah, yeah. that's not happening. I need to be able to get it from Alsa or something. <laughs> so anyway, that's where we are. We got some uh, quite a lot of coffee shout outs to do here because we last did coffee shout outs a fortnight ago on the 29th of July for a video that was supposed to go out that weekend. It got delayed by a week, so there's a whole bunch of people who probably should have been on that video and aren't. Sorry about all the noise, by the way. The road drills and all sorts of stuff yeah, been going on. There were a bunch of young ladies here chatting. So yeah. uh, would you have to take name, name number one, Nigel? This is a recent promotion to the horse list. Oh yes, Steve Skillen, who says keep up the g the great work. Great work. Oh, great we, work. We've been promoted ourselves from yeah. good work to great work. I like and that. And then we've got, oh I thought they said Chris Moyle, I was going to say, Christ, we've got famous people. <laughs> no, that, that's no, Keris Moyle. That's Keris Moyle. Who is very much a whore and okay. uh, has contributed before. The next one's interesting, this is uh, someone who's looked straight onto the whores list. Yes. Because they made a contribution and forgot to put their name on it, and they made another contribution which also had no name on it. <laughs> so two well done. Straight to the horses. Now, ordinarily, if the name isn't written in the uh, the display name of Buy Me a Coffee, then we don't read it out. We assume you don't want us to read it out and you want to remain anonymous. But seeing as this person did say that their second contribution was because they forgot to put their name on the first, we are going to read out Silver Moon Goddess. Well. Which doesn't really give away who they are anyway, but thank you, Silver Moon oh, Goddess. Really? Sounds like some sort of Wiccan thing. Well, I'm sorry that you failed to get your name actually printed on the screen twice, but we have mentioned you. Uh, we have a, a new virgin, an international virgin. Yes, from the USA. USA! Yee-haw! Eleanor Electrical. Yes. I wonder whereabouts in the US of A they yes, are. where are you? In fact, we've got two US of A contributors on to read out today. Another one coming up shortly. Oh, oh, go on. Go. oh what are you doing? Okay. Ah, yes, we've got Andy Payne, our competition winner for the bag of cash. Indeed. Well done, Andy Payne, a regular contributor, a regular yeah. supporter, and... the winner of the Sack of Cat Sack competition. Cat. Now, uh, that was in our Nick Bundy video a few videos back. Uh, there's a link in the description to the website where the competition winners were announced. Andy was very close, and the closest out of a bunch of people who were all very close. <laughs> His number that he submitted, he submitted 13 days before the end of the competition closed. It's not like he leapt in at the last minute with some kind of inside knowledge. It was 13 days before, and the numbers yep. sort of went up and down. But And at one point, other people were in the front running but in the end it closed and he was the closest uh, and i'm sorry i haven't sent it out to you yet Andy. got to do that you? this weekend i was still going to do I, I held off because i had, was using the knob shine mug uh, in my fan video and the yes. fan video was supposed to go out a week before but then it's one of those videos that a lot of feature creep came into and ended up uh being delayed next we have uh, gr electrical rh17 who is of course there a whore is. who asks if that guy, oh, that in, guy in that video was an artisan mole. No, he wasn't. No, we were probably a bit disingenuous by not actually mentioning who that guy was. But we did ask him at the end, and then uh, the end logo came crashing in, and just yeah. we, we couldn't hear what he said. So just rude, it was just rude. rude, just rude. Where are we? Ah, oh, oh, we've got Chris Dan Saff. Who also who said, I did like deciphering a Duffy ICR with this guy. Nice one. What is that phone thing you use with a keyboard on it? 
reminded me of a scion I tried many months ago. Many yes. moons ago, yes, uh, indeed. I, too, was a heavy scion user back in the 90s. Had a series, I think it was a 3A, then a 3C, then a 5MX, and then a Revo mm -hmm. at the end of the decade. Still got the Revo, although it's got the electronic equivalent of dementia these days and uh, no longer works. But yes, this is designed for people who used scions back in the day and it's a Cosmo Communicator. It does have its flaws, and they've now come up with a new model called the Astro Slide 5G. What have we got here? Ollie? Yep. Well worth a beer? Your good health, gents. Good health is not something <laughs> that we're promoting either of us right at the got. moment. Chucky Cheese, our man Chuck Kirchner, who is over in America, our second American contributor, who says he's friggin' poor now. Sorry yeah. to hear that, Chuck, you and us both. Uh, also, he's friggin' hot. That's temperature, not attractivity. Same here, still in this heat wave. What's it supposed to be today? 36 today, I think, here. Now, there'll be people watching this go, 36, part of the course where I live. Yeah. It I ain't know. round here, I can tell you that. Round here, it's damn hot. I'm surprised that society is still functioning around here because normally it doesn't take much to bring everything to a grinding halt. Not in the UK. David Patterson, greetings again from Northern Ireland. Greetings to you, David Patterson. Yes. Thank uh, you, David. I wonder if they're getting quite the same heat over there. I think it's always a little bit cooler in Ireland, isn't it? Because they got the uh, they're they're right next to the uh, Atlantic there, aren't they? Raining yeah. from my <laughs> experience on my visits there. Yeah. <laughs> Last time there was a heat wave in here in 2019, I was over in Ireland, and uh, yeah, we didn't get the heat wave. Ireland. <laughs> You insulate us from the worst of the weather. Yeah, thank you for that. Andy Karouche, whose contribution is purely aimed at Nige. Well, thank you, Andy. Uh, Maybe a nice cup of Darjeeling, is yes, it? Yes, it's nice to be recognised and uh, to leave him out for once, because he's always got to be uh, the star of the show. Well, you've either got it or you don't. <laughs> and Nigel, you don't come close. <laughs> Uh, Test Gear Junkie is a new promotion to the Hawes list. We haven't been we haven't been naming promotions and stuff, have we? Because David Patterson was also a new promotion. So yes, Test Gear Junkie, who found our this guy video to be a, an interesting but weird installation. It was indeed. Just to say on that, people were asking if it were just that house or if the neighbours were the same. We actually went to the neighbour's house to do some other work, didn't yes, we? Yes, we did. And we can confirm that house is built in the same way. Fuse in the living room ceiling, lighting all fused off the um, off the, the lights there. We should say uh, perhaps a special mention as well to Charlotte Robinson, who came out with us for that visit. Oh, yes, yes. And found what a bunch of absolute chances we really yes, are out on site. Yes. Despite what we show on video, when we're actually out on site, yeah, we're just as cowboyish as the next guy. But Charlotte <laughs> Robinson joined us on that job and saw the neighbour's house with its interesting setup. Yes. So uh, I hope you're doing well, Charlotte. And thank you for joining us last week out on the van. Uh, so that was uh, Test Gear Junkie. Thank you, Test Gear Junkie. Who was that guy, says Test Gear Junkie? I don't know. I don't know. Who was it? He just turned up. Who knows? Who knows? He was just here when we sat down in the morning. Oldest apprentice in the northwest. Well, he says it's still the best and most informative by a country mile. I'm not so sure about that myself. Well, but, uh, I, I guess we're better than Bundy. You know, it's, it's, it's not stiff competition. It's, you know, we, that could be the uh, the headline for the channel. What's a uh, yes, yes? We're still better than Bundy. What's a country mile in metric terms? It's got to be a couple of kilometres, surely. Two point two, maybe two point two kilometres. If, if you can keep that. it metric for us, please, next time. Uh, <laughs> the most informative by two point two kilometres. <laughs> two point two three kilometres. We have, of course, the venerable Mr. Humbug. Yeah, it yes. just wouldn't be a coffee shout out it without the, the old humbugger showing up. Uh, no, no message, no message. No, just, no. just, just pure generosity in that man. Good or old woman. Good old humbugger. Um, same with Mark Swift. Thank you, Mark yes, Swift, you, who Mark. is a promotion to the whores list, but has left no message. Uh, still, thank you for your contribution. You fucking we've got some kind of saw going on now. It was supposed to be our quiet coffee. No, before we started, it was road drills, and then we had the drill. women sitting at the table there, and now we've got a fucking saw going off. Well, our quiet corner is no longer quiet. So, apologies for the audio. We remind you that's part of the course of any of our videos. The audio is always what lets it down. 
Carl Robson, who's been working on his kitchen, and uh. says, maybe see you at Alex. Mm-hmm. Maybe. It depends how Dave feels at the time. I suppose know? it's only a month away. It creeps up on you, doesn't he it? Does, he does tend to say, oh, I'm not going to go this year. And then on the day, he's like, no, I fancy a day off. We'll go to Alex. But I don't know. It's, it's always up in the air until it happens. Isn't the prevailing it? thought at the moment is that we won't be in attendance this year, but we'll see. We'll see. And finally, Yoda, who uh, I haven't got it down on the list there, but I believe is also a newly promoted whore, certainly contributed before. Thank you, Yoda. Always cheers me up watching your shite, says well, Yoda. Yoda should really say that like Yoda, though. Should <laughs> say something like, uh, your shite cheers me up always whilst watching. <laughs> something like that, anyway, I don't know. Super wanks go to EF, or user, YouTube user EF, who says, thanks from PJSJ Design. What do they design? I don't know. And if Maybe called, we should uh, look it up. If they're PJSJ, why PJSJ? are they called EF? Yeah, maybe Who knows? it's one of those mysteries of the universe. Maybe they designed PJs. Who maybe knows? So, maybe so. Who knows? And finally, Mark Eastwood, also known as Anonymous Mark, who was never able to get his name onto the Buy Me A Coffee platform and has now given up on that and started sticking it on <laughs> <laughs> Super Wanks. Yes. And that is that. Right, I'd better go and uh, answer this voicemail. I think the coffee shout has taken longer than this video. Yeah, that's because you've let them mount up. I have let them mount up, so sorry, sorry about that. But, uh, you know, now that um, Neil Bridgman says that YouTube sparkies are all dead and done and dusted, perhaps there won't be any more videos to, to bother with. No, we'll find some. We'll find some. We'll find some. There'll be something. There's got to be something. Yeah. So until we find something, TTFN. See ya.